What's up, everyone? Welcome to your weekly tech update, the show that explores the newest, coolest, and craziest side of the interwebs. I am your host, Ray McNeil. Coming up on the program today, this new Steam shooter is basically Half-Life 2, and it rocks. Someone built a gaming PC in a working toilet. Happening in this week's What the Fancy Feast is hosting a pop-up restaurant for humans with a menu inspired by cat food. And of course, we'll wrap up the program with this week's Moment of Joy. All that and a whole lot more coming up on today's edition of your weekly tech update next. Released last week, Adaka is a first-person shooter that is a self-described throwback to the late 90s and early 2000s. This was the era of the linear but not stuck-in-hallways shooter, stuff like Half-Life 2, Halo, and Far Cry, the kind of shooters where you, yes, only have one path through each level and play space, but the areas are larger than Doom's hallways are interesting to explore and are often filled with environmental puzzles. And while Adaka is pulling from a lot of these shooters, it's most similar of all to Half-Life 2 and not by accident. Within the first 20 minutes of Adaka, you're given a gravity gun-like arm and forced to fight space cops who emit a loud blast of static and electronic screeching when killed. And like Gordon Freeman, the main star of Valve's Half-Life series, your main character never speaks on their long, unbroken journey from point A to point B. If you've played Half-Life two or its subsequent episodes, all of this should sound pretty familiar, but if it ain't broke, well, why fix it? The single developer who made Adaka clearly understands what made Half-Life 2 and its contemporaries work. For example, an early section involves a train, a desolate bridge, and not much else but the sound of a distant crow. While limited, the level works mainly because having to time when to move forward and when to squeak to the side to let the train fly by is made more intense by all the space cops shooting at you. Uh, of course, just like in Half-Life 2, you can also grab a big box and use it to block some of the bullets or fling it at the person shooting at you, knocking him off the bridge entirely. Another level features limited ammo and loads of small objects you can fling at zombie-like enemies, or you can use bigger ones to create obstacles to slow them down while you figure out how to escape. You always have options in a DACA. What makes this indie shooter stand out is how it routinely nails the flow and pacing of a Half-Life game, even if some parts feel less polished than Valve's classic shooter. This is most noticeable in some small areas like stairways where you'll clip through walls or stairs. Other times you run into performance issues or empty rooms that feel unfinished and characters aren't voiced. Instead, Instead, they do the Banjo-Kazooie chirping thing. None of this makes it harder to enjoy a DACA. It just reminds you of the scale of the game and its limited resources. It was also a reminder of how much of a passion project this game appears to be. When a DACA is working and nailing that Half-Life 2 feel, it's one of the favorite games of the year. Anyone who loved Half-Life 2 or Alex or any of the episodes should at the very least check out the game's free demo. I've not mentioned that this game also contains a full alternate open world campaign, so once you get tired of reliving the past, you get a whole other mode that plays more like a modern large-scale shooter like recent Far Cry games. An excellent value. Adaka is available on Steam for PC. It also has a free demo available to play now if you want to try it before you buy it. 
For 10 years now, NASA's Curiosity rover has trundled across the Martian landscape, searching for signs of life and learning about Mars's unique environment. Launched aboard an Atlas V rocket on November 26, 2011, the rover landed on Mars eight months later on August 5, 2012. Curiosity's trailblazing landing saw the spacecraft descend on a parachute before its landing system fired up its rockets to hover as the rover was lowered down to the surface using the sky crane. This landing technique was a roaring success that NASA repeated in February of 21 when the Perseverance rover arrived on Mars. For a decade now, Curiosity has journeyed across the Red Planet. If you want to see where the rover is right now, you can check out NASA's Where is the Rover feature. During its travels, Curiosity has unearthed some extensive evidence of past water and geological change, as well as shifts in climate. For the latest news about the mission, you can follow Space.com Curiosity Mars rover coverage. Curiosity has faced a myriad of challenges during its time on Mars, from computer glitches to drill malfunctions, orientation trouble, and extensive damage to its wheels. But the robust rover keeps bouncing back and continues to investigate the Martian environment to this day. Space.com is celebrating 10 years of Curiosity photos. If you want to check them all out for yourself, head on over to space.com forward slash Curiosity Mars Rover Best Images. You can find AI that creates new images, but what if you want to fix an old family photo? Luis Bouchard and Petapixel have drawn attention to a free tool recently developed by Tencent researchers GFP GAN, that's the Generative Facial Prior Generative Adversarial Network, whatever that means that can restore damaged and low-resolution portraits. The technology merges info from two AI models to fill in a photo's missing details with realistic detail in a few seconds, all the while maintaining high accuracy and quality. Look at these results. Conventional methods fine-tune an existing AI model to restore images by gauging differences between the artificial and real photos, that frequently leads to low-quality results. The scientists said that the new approach uses a pre-trained version of an existing model, NVIDIA's Style GAN 2, to inform the team's own model at multiple stages during the image generation process. The technique aims to preserve the identity of people in a photo with a particular focus on facial features like the eyes and mouth. You can try a demo of GFP GAN for free. The creators have also posted their code to let anyone implement the restoration tech in their own projects. This project is still bound by the limitations of current AI. While it's surprisingly accurate, it's making educated guesses about all the missing content. The researchers warned that you might see a slight change of identity and a lower resolution than you might like. Don't rely on this to print a poster-sized photo of your grandparents, in other words. All the same, the work here is promising and fascinating. It hints at a future where you can easily rescue images that would otherwise be lost to the ravages of time. 